Right folks, this video is all about setting the swivel preload on your Land Rover, Range Rover, Disco. This is a classic Range Rover. As far as I'm aware, all of the Range Rover swivels are set up exactly the same, but check your manual. This one, good old Haynes. Um, the, the, the process is actually detailed really, really well in the front and rear axle section, but effectively, you've got the bottom swivel pin, which is fixed, and you've got the top swivel pin. Uh, now, when you do the top swivel pin up, it will compress, because you've got two coned bearings in here, it will compress between the top and the bottom swivel pins. What you basically need to do um, is to fit the right number of shims so that when you pull on the hub, it, it responds at a specific torque. Now, what tools do you need? Not a lot, actually. A couple of specialist things. Spring balance. Use them for just about everything. Spring balance is really useful. And effectively, what you're looking to do here is to exert, I think it's two to three pounds of force when you swivel. Okay? That's the main thing. Um, 2.5 to three pounds. So we haven't got, and we've got a really kind of fine scale on this one. I might get my other one. No, I can do this. Because I've got two and I've got four. So I'll work halfway between the two and the four scale. You can get really fine spring balances. I'm, I generally get a feel for these things and how they, they go together. It's fairly easy. You'll need a torque wrench because obviously you need to do the swivel pin bolts up um, to 60 foot pounds every single time that you add or remove a shim to test it again because there's no point testing it while it's loose. Um, and lastly, all I would suggest is you just have a second wrench so you can undo the bloody thing because you keep taking these things apart and putting them together and taking them apart and putting them together and taking them apart and putting them together, taking them apart, putting them together, and try to get the wall. And I have got a bloody great big bag of old shims that I have used over the years. Um, and I clean them all up and I use them again. There's no reason why you can't. They come in so many, there's loads of WD-40 on here, but they come in so many different thicknesses. You get the mega thick ones and then they go down to the thin skinny ones because it is a bit of an exact science. So what we'll do, I'm lobbing those there. I'm not going to bother... Um, thread locking any of the bolts. I'll just do them up to the torque, but ultimately when it all goes back together again, there is a brake uh, bracket that goes on the top here. Uh, and also then there's lock tabs as well. So I'm not gonna do any of that in this video because all I'm doing here is setting up the preload. Um, so what we'll do, first of all, I think is we'll put a few shims underneath. Start off with um, a couple of the big fat, big fat ones. Just take a big handful of them. Let's put them underneath there. Let's put the pin in, and I want to make sure that when I do this pin up, it's not going to crush the bearing. There's a little bit of wiggling around required to get the thing to seat down. It's probably not that far off the start of the test. So we'll wind a couple of bolts in. Obviously, all the threads are nice and clean. But you don't want to be wrestling with dirty threads on this thing, because it will just make your life miserable. Now I've got the luxury of the axle being off the car, but you don't need to do this with the axle off the car. I've done more than my fair share of these with the axle located, uh, wheel off obviously. You need to remove the bolts that hold the sweep seal of, and also the, um, the, 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 the retainer, the retaining plate as well. Now if you are removing the sweep seal, it would make sense to replace it. Um, in order to replace it, you either undo the six or seven bolts that hold the ball to the um, to the axle housing, or alternatively, because you're doing the sweep tool, you may well have taken the whole bloody thing apart, replaced bearings and so forth, in which case make sure those go on before you put the sweep, uh, swivel seal back on, swivel housing back on. Right, now we've done that, what I need to do next is torque this up. So first and foremost, make sure that there are no obstructions. I'm just gonna do it up gently, nice and evenly on the top pin, what I want to make sure is I'm not crushing anything. Right, that's okay so far. Oopsie. Right, 60 and 60. It's quite lumpy, that. So let's test out now how many foot-pounds of torque we need to pull that. Six. Eight, ten, starts to move, twelve, twelve pounds. So, 
we need to do, we need to add shims in now. Um, oh dear, 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 dear. Where's my other socket going? So we add shims in. So we're quite a long way over. So what I might do is add another really fat one in. You can see why this becomes a pain in the arse. Because they did up really nicely up to. I mean, obviously, if your um, uh, your your torque wrench has got a reverse on it, then fine, do that. But my, my, well, mine just doesn't work quite as easily as that. Now, what you will find is, as you start getting closer, um, you may find that you only need a tiny shim. So I'm only going to add a couple of tiny shims in next to see what happens. Now, this screw on the top here is actually quite useful because it helps you pull the, the, the swivel pin back out again. And obviously, I need to make sure I retain the, the um, shims I've already put in there. So let's have that one and that one. So we'll put just a couple of shims on. So it's the bottom two that have gone back on again. So if we're now stupidly small, then I need to take one of those out. And you start fiddling around with it that way. Sometimes you have to get down to using a micrometer to work out what the overall thickness is. Otherwise, it just ends up being complete and utter guesswork. And you don't want that. No one needs guesswork in their lives. But once this is done, you see, I can assemble the sweep seal and I can then start to build up the uh, the hubs. Now, the hubs still need painting on this, so I've not done that yet. But uh, they're good enough for the time being. I'll just put a bag over the end. Right, push that onto the bump stop. Right, now, let's there. Let's do these up. Let's just check that was 60. It was indeed. Still a bit notchy. I suspect it's because we've got new CV joints and new. Well, it's no new, new CV joints, the rest of it's original. I mean, obviously, the steering would take out any play, but not much than quite that. Lubricate it around. Right, okay. So let's try again. See what foot pounds we need now. Two, four, oh, six. So six pounds. So we've gone down from uh, 12 or 14 or whatever, which is six pounds. So I'll add, now this is where it gets silly now, because I'll add one small shim. Although I've halved the amount of effort to turn it by putting, you know, a medium and a tiny one in, in order to do the next kind of go down from, from six pounds to two and a half to three pounds, I probably have to put a wafer thin one in. Um, That's what I mean about, it's sometimes a little bit fiddly. Having clean threads does not help. It really does. Right, take the box out. Lift up the swivel with all its associated shims because I want to keep them in order. And then what I'll do is I'm going to put a thin, but not a micro thin one in. Okay, then that can go back on. Okay, that can go in. The effect of having um, the axle too loose, by the way, if you, if, you, if you need barely any effort to turn it, it is one of the things that will cause the uh, the death wobble of uh, fear. So um, it's one of the reasons why this preload needs to be set properly. Oh, 
was much less still a bit clicky but nowhere near as much i suspect it's just the uh, load on the brand spanking new cv joint from china, from china. two four five okay so that's nearly six to move it but then it kind of needs more to get past that lumpy bit over the middle so i'm moving it on the kind of free edge that's five five pounds again oh guess what i could do is i could have done it without the cv joint but then the danger is you'll end up with a different reading without the cv joint as you will with it Right, so I'm going to put a wafer thin one in now. What we may find is that we need to take out the second to last one and put in a wafer or a thin one. That's not a wafer thin one. That one is. That's a wafer or thin. Also bear in mind there's no lube on any of these, um, well there is, there's light lube on the bearings. So when the swivel housing is full up with um, oil, it's going to behave slightly differently. La, 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 la. Oh. <laughs> Tight spots significantly lighter now. So let's torque these up. Swivel them around a bit. Right. Now ah, two. So you now. So once it overcomes its friction, let's see if I've got a slightly lighter. Let's try and put it that way. So it's overcoming the friction to start off with, you see. I'd say that's not far off, actually. What I might do, so just turning on the fork. What I might do is just put one tiny shim in there and then call it a day with this side and then go ahead and repeat the other side. That's how bloody thin the, the wafer thin ones are. I keep saying wafer thin, by the way, because I was watching um, uh, Monty Python um, Meaning of Life the other day with Monsieur Creosote. If you don't know who Monsieur Creosote is and you're a bit on the uh, squeamish nature, <laughs> don't watch it. <laughs> but it was very funny. Just put one wafer of thin mint, Monsieur. Oh, fuck off, I'm stuffed. Right. Swirl them around. Swivel in the swivel pin. Swivel pin, swivel. I'll be a bit light now. Let's talk him. If this is too light, what I'm inclined to do is, no, I think that's all right. 
It's kind of how I remember them. So let's put it this way first of all. Two, three, it's turning, so it's turning on three. Let's put him round to that side, get him off the, so not, not overcoming resistance right on the extreme. Two, three, perfect. That's that. So that's that one done. Now, all I need to do now is add on the sweep seal retainer. Um, and that's this side finished. Obviously, I still need to build up the hubs and so forth. Um, but other than that, that has been a success. Now, these little bolts on the back here, um, they barely need any torque whatsoever. So don't go preserve with them. Do not do not get your half inch socket set on these tiny little nuts, these tiny little bolts, because uh, you snap them off. And then of course then, you won't be able to hold the sweep seal in. And if you can't hold the sweep seal in, how do you expect your Land Rover to be drip free? It's gonna, always gonna be moisture free. Sorry, it's always gonna be covered in moisture, these balls. It does amuse me when uh, the MOT man says, I'm going to have to report the fact that you've got moisture dripping off your front axle. Yeah, but it's supposed to be like that. Different era, I'm afraid. Six of these little bolts hold these retaining things on. You can get brand new retainers, but the retainers that came off this axle, they were fine. I'm using them again. And then when you're doing up these retaining bolts, I tend to work diagonally opposite. To, uh, to, 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 you know, to basically get it into place so I don't have to then squeeze the seal in at one place but not another. Now what I'll find at this point is that once it's all squeezed in, I may well find that the hub gets tighter but that's why you have to do these things without the sweep seal. Without the seal or Seven sixteenths. Boom. Just pull it in gently. I'm not torqued that one right up yet. Do the other side. Just pushing the seal into its housing. Oh, 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 oh. So, if this has been helpful to you, consider giving me a thumbs up. Um, a thumbs down if you absolutely must but if you got this far you, you haven't given me a thumbs down i don't know why you would um, unless you're trolling of course but no i don't mind your troll um subscribe if you like more it does help the channel if you hit the old subscribe button if you want to know when i'm launching new videos then hit the old bell beside the subscribe uh, subscribe button and it will notify you when there's new shit coming out i tend not to premiere my videos i just tend to launch and there's no Kind of schedule for me launching stuff is as and when i get a time to do it because this is my day job and making videos i do for shits and giggles to help you good folk out if you want to contact me if you want me to do work on your land rover range rover whatever church house classics it is all one word at gmail.com so the uh, email address is the same as this channel title but it's all one word church house classics uh, or alternatively you can go to my website which is linked from the um uh from my youtube channel at the spot on the, on the main screen you will see on um, where the stag is where the nose of the stag is on my header you'll see a link to my website hit the old contact button there and i'll do my best to get back to you so that's not nowhere near as lumpy now it's evened it all out um and yeah hope you've enjoyed it have a nice day, which it's not down in Devon at the moment. It's pissing over rain, but then I'm English and I like to moan about the weather. It's like a darn good Scottish summer, this is. Thanks for watching.